السلام علیکم و رحمۃ اللہ وبرکاتہ Today we are here to participate in a debate on a very important topic from science and you study it in your class also. The topic for debate today is sound. You know that sound is very important, right? And sound plays very important role in our life. We communicate with the people with the help of sound and we hear a variety of sounds produced by musical instruments like flute, tabla, harmonium, etc. And so today in this debate today we are going to discuss how sound is produced, how it travels or propagates from one place to another, how we hear sound and how some sounds are louder and some are not. So these are the things that we are going to discuss in the debate today. But before that, I would like all of you to give your introduction and also tell us how you feel about uh, being a part of this debate. So, please start your introduction. Uh, Bushra, you are going to start? Yes, sir. Please. Greetings to everybody. I am Bushra Padma of Standard A. I would like to thank my teachers at Supa Smart School for giving me this opportunity. Right. I feel privileged as I think that this debate will help improve my language and I am excited because I have a passion for science. Very good. I am happy to know that you say that this debate is going to improve your language as well. Apart from improving the knowledge of science, it is also going to help improve uh, speaking English or it will help you improve uh, fluency of English, right? Very good. Next, who will introduce? Well, I am Mohammad Mahfouz of same standard. Mm -hmm. I express my gratitude to my school and feel very happy to participate in this debate. It is an opportunity for me to learn as well as to contribute the process of learning. Very good. Uh, good introduction. Uh, now, can you s tell about yourself? I am Zahra Fatma, a student of standard 8. I would like to extend my greetings to all of you. I like this type of debate as it helps improve both our confidence and knowledge. Science is a necessary field of learning in our life, so I am so glad to be here. Very good. Uh, now, can you tell us about yourself? My name is Mohammad Ashraf and I am also a student of Standard 8. Mm. I am immensely pleased to be a part of this debate. I would like to thank the faculty of Super Smart School who motivated us to be a creative. Uh, very good. You say that the teachers, the faculty motivate you to participate in uh, activities like this debate, etc. Thank you very much. You have all given introduction. Now it's time for the debate to start. I will uh, first of all tell you the rules, right? Uh, every participant, each one of you are going to get uh, three minutes to speak on the topic of sound and uh, you will start speaking when I uh, reset the timer. The timer will continue. It will uh, stop when the time is over. And after one of you has spoken, uh, the remaining three will be given a time of one minute to ask a question and get a reply to that. Correct? So, are you all ready? Uh, I will tell you first, you will start Bushra. Bushra will be followed by uh, Fus, and then uh, you, Zahra will speak and finally you will speak on the topic. Correct? Are you all ready? Yes. So, I am going to start uh, uh, reset the timer. Please be ready. Your time, Bushra, starts now. We are going to discuss sound today. When we observe the production of sounds carefully, we find that sound is produced when there is by a vibrating body. To understand better, we do an activity. We take a metal plate or a pan, hang it at a convenient place in such a way that it does not touch any wall. Mm -hmm. Now, when we strike it with a stick, we hear a sound. Mm -hmm. If we touch the plate or pan gently with our fingers, when it is producing sound, we feel the vibrations in the plate or pan, mm -hmm. but we do not feel any vibrations in the plate or pan mm -hmm. after it has stopped producing sound. Mm -hmm. we, we see this shows that sound is produced when there is vibration in the body. Here mm -hmm. we should also know what vibration is. Mm -hmm. As I remember, we learned in class 7 that to and fro or back and forth motion of an, of an object is called vibration. So when I say I feel vibration, I mean that there is to and fro motion in that object. We see that a vibrating object produces sound. 
In some cases, vibration on his sleeve is equal to us, but in most cases, their amplitude is so small that we cannot see them. Correct. When we hear sound from the musical instrument in Tara, mm -hmm. thus we can identify that its vibrating part is its string. Mm -hmm. Similarly, the vibrating part of a vena is its string. While near tabla, the vibrating part is the membrane fixed on one side. Correct. Here we will have to remember when we plug the string of a musical instrument mm -hmm. like the sitar. Mm -hmm. The sound that we hear is not only that of the string, the whole instrument is forced to vibrate. Very true. And it is the sound of the vibration of the instrument that we hear. Similarly, when we strike the membrane of a midangam, mm -hmm. the sound that we hear is not only that of the membrane, but of the whole body of the instrument. Correct. Very good. Uh, Bushra has explained very well about uh, how sound is produced. And you say that it is vibration that is the uh, basis of production of sound. Uh, is there any question that you want to ask anybody? Yes, yes I, ha I have a question. Uh -huh. You said that a sound is produced by vibration or by the vibrating body. Yeah. You mean to say that vibration can take some part of our body when we speak because when we speak a sound is produced. Yeah. Yes, it does. Vibration does take place when we speak. <laughs> to understand it, do one thing. Speak loudly for a while or sing a song or buzz like a bee. <laughs> Put your hand on your throat. Do you feel any vibration? Yeah. Yes, you will feel vibration. Okay. In humans, the sound is produced by the voice box or larynx. Mm -hmm. To absorb it, put your fingers on the throat and find a hard bump that seems to move when you swallow. Mm -hmm. This part of the body is known as the voice box. It is at the upper end of the windpipe. Two vocal cords are stretched across the voice box or larynx in such a way that leaves a narrow slit between them for the passage of air. Okay. Very good. When, Very good. The, when the lungs force air through the slit, the vocal cords vibrate producing okay. sound. She has very well explained how lungs say, uh, I mean, uh, they flow air and they come to the vocal cords and vocal cords vibrate and this is how a human being produces sound, speaks. Very good. Uh, now it's time for the next participant to speak for three minutes and who is the next participant? You, Mahfuz. So if your time starts now, uh, please start. I would like to add to what Musa said, apart from the vocal cords, the muscle attached to them can make coarse tight or loose. Mm. When the vocal cords are tight and thin, the type or quality of voice is different. Yeah. To understand it, there is one activity. Mm. I take a two rubber stick of the same size. See, mm. I place these two pieces, one above and the other stays in tight. Now blows air through the gap between them. Mm. As the air blows through the stretch rubber strips, mm. a sound is produced. Mm. This is how our vocal cords produce sound. Mm. We must also know that the vocals for the man, women, children are different. Mm -hmm. Men have very men have men have men vocal cords are about 20 mm long. Mm. In women, these are about 50 mm long. Long children have very short vocal cords. Mm. This is the reason why the voice of men, women, children are different. Mm. We have learned how vocal cords produce sound. Let's try to understand how sound can travel through one person to another or from one place to another or how it propagates. Correct. In this regard, I would like to say that a sound in a medium to travel or to propagate. Correct. Propagate. To understand yes. it further, let's do an activity. Mm -hmm. I take I take a metal or, or a glass tumbler. See, this glass tumbler is right. Now mm -hmm. I place a cell phone in it. I will ask any one of you to give a ring on this cell phone from the another cell phone. Okay. Listen to that in carefully. The sound is more fainter. I said when I suck air. We come to understand the ringing. We come to understand the ringing of loudness decrease when the decrease air in the tumbler. Uh -huh. When I remove the tumbler from my mouth, the sound becomes loud again. It is if I have been able to suck all air from the tumbler, you will not listen any sound. This comes from the sound in the medium to travel. When, when the air has been removed completely from the vessel, it is said that there is a vacuum in the vessel. The sound cannot travel through a vacuum. Okay, 19 seconds were left. Very well said. You have explained how sound is a medium to travel, how sound <coughs> travels. And the medium you said is uh, air that helps the sound to propagate. And now this is what you say. Uh, now, is there any question? Yes, I would like to ask one thing. Mm. You have made a point that uh -huh. sound needs a medium to travel or propagate and there is a medium for sound to travel. Yeah. Can you tell me if sound can travel through other medium? I mean, can sound travel through a liquid or a solid? Very yes, good. Sound. Yeah. yes, sound can 
travel through both a living and a solid. Mm -hmm. Actually, it can travel through any medium. Mm -hmm. If you take a small balloon, one in your hand, and a bucket full of water, shake the balloon inside the water to produce sound. Try to hear the sound by placing your ear gently on the water surface. Then you will hear the sound of the bell. This, this, this book, the sound travels through a liquid. If similarly, if you if you place your ear at one end of the long wooden or metallic table mm -hmm. and ask and ask gently somebody to stretch the other end of the table, mm -hmm. you will hear the sound of the stretch. This indicates the sound can travel through a solid wood, metal, or any solid. Very good, very good. Explain. You proved that the sound uh, can also travel through liquid like water, and it can also travel through again through solids, right? We have given examples also. Now it's the time, it's the turn of uh, the next uh, participant and that is Zahra. Are you ready Zahra? Yes. I am going to reset the time of three minutes. You please start now. Start. Since we have already debated how sound is produced and how it propagates, yeah. I would like to explain how we hear sound. Mm. Uh, we know that we hear sound through our ears. I am going to tell how our ear functions. Mm -hmm. For this, we should know the shape of our ear. The shape of the outer part of the ear is like a funnel. When yeah. sound enters it, it travels down a canal. At the end of it, there is a thin stretched membrane. It is called the eardrum. It performs an important function. To understand what the eardrum does, let yeah. us build a 10 can model of the eardrum. Put four or five grains of dry cereal on the stretched rubber. Mm -hmm. Now ask your friend to speak Allah Akbar, Allah Akbar from the open end. Mm -hmm. You will observe that the grains jump up and down. The eardrum, the eardrum is like a stretched rubber sheet. Mm -hmm. Sound vibrations make the eardrum vibrate. The right. eardrum send vibration to the inner ear. Mm -hmm. From there the signal goes to the brain. That is how we hear. It means that the thin membrane inside our ear is very important. We must never put a sharp point or a hard thing into our ear. It can damage the eardrum. The damaged eardrum can impair hearing. Now I am going to tell about amplitude, time period and frequency of vibration. We have learned that the to and from motion of an object is known as vibration. This motion is also called oscillatory motion. The number of oscillation per second is known as frequency of oscillation. Amplitude and frequency are two important properties of any sound. We differentiate sounds on the basis of their amplitudes and frequencies. Correct. Correct. Very good. You explained everything and you took around uh, two minutes. You have spoken very well, explained uh, how actually the sound is heard, how we hear sounds. Now, is there any question that you want to ask? I want to. I want a question. Okay. I want to know uh, how a sound is made loud and slow. Okay. You want to know how sound becomes louder and how loud. Loudness of sound depends upon the amplitude of vibration. Mm. It is proportional to the square of the amplitude of the vibration producing the sound. Correct. For example, if the loudness is above, uh, if the loudness becomes twice, the loudness increases by a factor of four. Correct. The loudness is is expressed in a unit called decibel. Mm. The loudness of sound coming from a normal breathing is 10 decibel, soft whisper is 30 decibel, normal conversation is 60 decibel, busy traffic is 70 decibel, and that from average factory is 80 decibel. Mm. If the loudness is above 80 decibel, mm. the noise becomes physically painful. Mm. Very well explained. Explained very well. Now um, it's time for the last or the final participant. You are you ready? Oh, your time. I'm going to reset the timer. Your time of three minutes starts now. Please carry on. Well, I would like to tell about audible and inaudible sounds. Mm -hmm. We know that we need a vibrating body for the production of sounds. Correct. But let's but let's know if we can hear the all if we can hear sounds of all vibrating bodies. The fact is that all sound frequency is less than about twenty vibration per second. That is twenty. Hearts mm. such cannot be detected by the human ear. Correct. Correct. Such sounds are inaudible. Such sounds are called inaudible. Mm. On the higher sides, sound frequency is higher than about twenty to twenty thousand vibration per second. That is twenty kilohertz. Yeah are also not audible to the human ear. Mm. Thus, for a human ear, the range of audible frequency is from roughly 
to twenty to twenty thousand hertz. Yeah. We, we can. We all. We should also know that some animals can. Some animals can hear the sound frequency is less higher than about twenty thousand hertz. Yeah. Dogs have this ability. Mm. The police use high frequencies whistles to whistles to whistles which dogs can hear the sounds but humans cannot. Yeah. The ultrasound the ultrasound equipment familiar to us familiar to us um, to investigative the investigative and tracking medical problems. Got it, got it. Dear friends, we we hear different types of sounds around us. Sometimes sounds can sounds causes discomfort to us. Mm. Some sounds are unpleasant to the ear. Yeah. Whereas uh, whereas some are not. Yeah, correct. Very good. So you have taken uh, around two and a half minutes. Thank you very much. Uh, is there any question that you want to ask him? Yes, I want to know something. Yeah. Ashram has explained audible and inaudible sound. He also said about noise pollution. I want to know some sources of noise pollution. Sources of noise pollution. Can you, can you say? Yes, I will. Please. The sources or causes and of noise pollution are many. Huh. The sounds of vehicles explosion including rusting of crackers, huh. Lord speaker machines, mm. etc. Mm. The so, some sources in the home yeah. may, may also lead by noise pollution. Correct, correct. They are televisions mm. and transistor mm. are in high volume. Yeah, correct. Very some kitchen appliances. Yeah, dessert coolers, uh, air conditioners, uh, all contribute to, to noise, noise pollution. pollution. Correct, yeah. hmm. So you gave some examples of noise pollution and uh, we have uh, in a beautiful way uh, co conducted or continued the debate and we discussed many things about sound, how sound is produced, how sound travels from one place to another, how it propagates, how we hear sound and how some sounds are louder and some are not. And we also learned that some sounds are pleasant but some are not and the unpleasant sounds are very loud sounds make noise pollution. You gave some examples of noise pollution also. So it's very good. Uh, keep it up. Keep practicing like this for debates in other subjects as well. Thank you very much. Allah Hafiz. Allah Hafiz.